Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're continuing the second rebellion of Huainan, Let's Talk Lore series with episode 3, titled Wen Yang's Raid. Before we get started, here's the answer to our trivia question from the end of our last episode, and be sure to stay tuned until the end of this episode for a brand new trivia question. Now last time we ended as Guan Qiujian's open rebellion in Huainan pushed Sima Shi to march in response with the Wei Central Army, despite his recent surgery to remove a tumor under one of his eyes. Of course, this response did not happen overnight as Guan Qiujian had the jump on the Wei defense, as the initial phase of the war was heavily in Guan Qiujian's favor. Now before we talk about the battle itself, I just want to highlight that this particular route was picked by Guan Qiujian because of the flow of the Yinhe River, which gives its name to the commandery of Yinchuan, as this moderately sized river connects the Huai River all the way to just south of Luoyang, making it the perfect vessel for supply transport for the marching army. And with a total marching distance of roughly 560 kilometers between Shouchun and Luoyang, Guan Qiujian's army easily advanced 300 kilometers with little resistance until they were finally halted by a sizable defense at Lejia County near the city of Xiangcheng, just southeast of the Wei secondary capital of Xucheng. The Wei army that would stop Guan Xiujian's advance would be none other than General Deng Ai, who was the prefect of the Yan province at the time. Now, Deng Ai's action here was not the result of the Wei imperial court, as when Guan Xiujian made his public declaration of Sima Shi's crimes, he sent messengers to all the regional commanders, including Deng Ai, who was in charge of the Yan province garrison, to see if they would rally to his cause. Deng Ai, who would still be just a stuttering Tun Tian farm boy without Sima Yi's promotion and tutelage, naturally was a fierce Sima clan loyalist. So when Guan Xiujian's messenger arrived, Deng Ai promptly executed the messenger, and then immediately, without consultation with the imperial court, marched the Yan province garrison west towards Xucheng to guard the path towards Luoyang, as he knew speed was of the essence in war. And thus, before Sima Shi and the imperial court could come up with a proper response to Guan Xiujian's rebellion, Deng Ai, through his pure military instinct, ended up saving the secondary capital of Xucheng, as the Yan province garrison under his command arrived at Lejia County first and dug in to form a defensive position, which brought Guan Xiujian's march to a halt. Deng Ai's actions here also bought Sima Shi enough time to not only organize the Wei Central Army to arrive at their forward position at Ruyang not long after, but in addition gave Sima Shi the time to give orders to General Wang Ji of the Jin province, General Zhuge Dan of the Yu province, and General Hu Zun of the Xu province to mobilize their respective garrison forces to surround Guan Qiujian's army. Wang Ji's orders was originally to group together with Sima Shi's central army, but Wang Ji, who had independent military commands, ignored Sima Shi's command, as he would instead march west of Guan Qiujian's position at Nandun to prevent Guan Qiujian's army from spilling west into the Jin province. General Hu Zun was ordered to have his force move behind Guan Qiujian's army to cut off their path back to Shouchun, well, finally, General Zhuge Dan, who was the first one to denounce the plot and reveal it to Sima Shi, was ordered to march east to attack Guan Xiujian's remaining forces in Shouchun to take control of the city and the families of all of Guan Xiujian's officers. As you see, Sima Shi's approach to defeat Guan Xiujian was crafted by his advisor Wang Su, who argued that because the families of Guan Xiujian's troops lived mostly in the north, deep within Wei territory, all they would have to do is blunt Guan Xiujian's initial thrust. Then, over time, the sense of hopelessness would grow within Guan Xiujian's army, especially if Zhuge Dan's Yu province forces could also threaten to take the families of Guan Xiujian's mid-level officers in Shouchun. Then, much like how Guan Yu's army collapsed after Lu Meng took control of Jiangling, where most of Guan Yu's officers' families resided, 
ultimately leading to mass desertion and Guan Yu's eventual death. Guan Xiujian's army would also implode from the inside at that point. Now, Wang Su's plan was rather brilliant, and it's not surprising, as Wang Su was the capable eldest son of the court scholar Wang Lang and the father of Wang Yuanji, who would become Sima Zhao's wife. Of course, this plan first relied on blunting Guan Xiujian's initial attack, which thanks to Deng Ai's masterful analysis of the situation and swift military action, was already achieved. Now, Sima Shi just needed to give Guan Xiujian's army a sound defeat to let the doubt creep in before the mass desertions would finish them off. Now, to bait Guan Xiujian's army into a disadvantaged battle, Sima Shi ordered Deng Ai to pull back most of his troops out of Lejia, as only 10,000 Taishan Commandery Infantry Unit were left behind to give off the appearance of a vulnerable position that Guan Xiujian's army could overwhelm. Meanwhile, Sima Shi moved his Central Army forces quietly from their garrison position at Ruyang to an area north of Lejia County, that was just out of view of Guan Xiujian's scouts, thanks to the presence of the Inhe River, which lied north of Lejia County. So, not knowing the apparent weakness at Lejia to be a trap, Guan Xiujian ordered Wen Qing to take his cavalry unit to attack Deng Ai's forces, as remaining here at Xiangcheng, as the other Wei provincial garrisons surrounded them, would spell their eventual doom. And that night, when Wen Qing's forces moved into Lejia, they quickly noticed that Deng Ai's forces had constructed numerous floating bridges across the Yinhe River, and that Sima Shi's main army was just sitting across the river, ready to reinforce. So Wen Qing immediately halted their attack, and used their speed to retreat safely out of Lejia without suffering any casualties. Regrouping on the outskirts of Lejia, Wen Qing's son, Wen Yang, who had just turned 18, rode up to his father and begged his father to consider a second attack. While Sima Shi's army is numerous, Wen Yang argued that this would be their best and only opportunity given that the enemy had just arrived from what must have been a long march. Additionally, Sima Shi's force would be unprepared and have their guards down as they had just witnessed our retreat, so logically they would never expect a second attack on the same night. Convinced by his son, and knowing that pulling back to a defensive position with Guan Qiujian would just mean a slow death, Wen Qing agreed, as he divided his force into two, with him and his son Wen Yang each commanding half, as they would charge back into Lejia for a second time. And Wen Yang's read on the situation would prove correct, as Sima Shi's force was already largely asleep, with only a few guards posted as they wrongly believe that with Wen Qing's initial retreat, that no more attacks would be coming, at least for that night. So when Wen Qing and Wen Yang's cavalry charged into the encampment from two separate directions, all hell broke loose inside Sima Shi's camp. Sima Shi, who was also already asleep, would be jolted awake by the sounds of his own name, as Wen Yang and his unit yelled out Sima Shi's name repeatedly as they tore through the Wei encampment, looking for Sima Shi's main tent, hoping to cut off the head of the snake. In this mass panic, Sima Shi's fresh wound on his face, right below his eye, would burst open, and with the damages to his face muscles from the surgery, Sima Shi's eyeball would actually fall out as the excruciating pain kept Sima Shi in bed as his top officers rushed to his tent. And in order to not spread even more panic to his own officers, Sima Shi ended up burying his head under his blanket as he bit down on the blanket to stop himself from screaming out in pain, as his officers would soon bring order to the camp after seeing how calm Sima Shi was about the situation, even though in reality, Sima Shi was suffering through extreme pain as this re-aggravation of the wound would actually claim his life not long after. But for the time being, Wen Qing and Wen Yang's raid soon ran out of steam after the initial shock, as after all, their minuscule troop count was inconsequential when compared to the size of Sima Shi's reinforcement army. So once the panic resided in the Wei camp, Wen Qing and Wen Yang wisely retreated. At this point, Sima Shi finally sat up 
as he showed his gruesome face to his generals, and through unimaginable pain, Sima Shi gave the orders to his military advisor, Sima Ban, to take 8,000 cavalry unit to immediately give chase to Wen Qing and Wen Yang's forces, with General Yue Chen, who was the son of Yue Jin, to take the infantry to follow closely behind. After giving these orders, Sima Shi was immediately evacuated to the nearby city of Xuchang to seek medical aid, as we'll continue to discuss the fate of Wen Qing, Wen Yang, and Sima Shi next time, as our series will continue tomorrow with episode 4, titled Guan Qiujian's Tragic End. So hopefully you all have enjoyed this episode enough to consider subscribing to the channel for more content on Three Kingdoms history, or simply support the channel by leaving a comment below, or just by hitting the like button. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye!